Hi everyone, welcome to this history tour with Holly. Today, I'm going to stray from my usual topics of uh, history and literature in terms of books, and I'm going to talk about a podcast. Now, this is one that's free on a, the ABC Listen app, and it's called Stuff the British Stole by Mark Fennell. Mark Fennell is well known as a presenter on the feed on SBS Viceland, and he's got a number of podcasts, including uh, a, t like a few technology ones and that sort of stuff. Download This Show is a very um, well-known one that he does, and he's written a couple of books now, and I've always really enjoyed his work. He's very funny. Um, but he's also really clever in the way he gets popular culture to interact with the bigger ethical issues. Uh, so this podcast is about history. It's called Stuff the British Stole, and it's about different aspects of well trophies and other elements of culture that British imperialists took from lands that they had conquered or, or had wars in over the years and the quests to get them back to the traditional owners so there's ones about Pekingese dogs and some of the um, issues with the British colonization in Taiwan there's uh, one about the a head like the heads severed heads in Maori culture and how they became a staple on British mantelpieces which is pretty disgusting um, there's ones from uh, India and South Africa there's there's stuff like that there's I don't know there's all different things um, the most recent one was about the Guigal shield which apparently was the shield that the two men were holding on Sydney Harbour when the Endeavour first came and it has the shot like the bullet hole in it from when one of the first settlers shot the first Aboriginal man after they'd thrown spears at them um, and the quest to figure out is that actually that shield and all the challenges around people that are historians that are trying to get it back traditional owners in the different countries that are trying to get them back and what they mean and whether it's important to get it back and also so much interesting stuff about the history of the the era that the, the item comes from and the ethics around you know the understanding like one of the, my the most interesting ones was the one about the Maori um, severed heads and how one of the women that was part of the cultural integrity unit in the New Zealand government who was a Maori woman um, said about how like, she was so un she understood how it, they didn't think of it like they didn't think of the indigenous peoples of the, the nations they were conquering as fully human and they didn't understand what they were doing but now we do and now it's a chance to fix it and Mark Fennell was saying how amazed he was at how forgiving she was and how, how incredibly um, well, yeah forgiving and and gracious she was being and she said well you know you have to be otherwise there's no way forward I just thought that was fascinating um, and it's so true like the only way we can do this is by working together and moving forward and I I mean I'm white through and through I, I have no claim to being indigenous connect to any indigenous nation and yet I'm very sympathetic to all of these getting these traditional things back but I mean I can't imagine how heartbreaking it must be for the descendants of these people to have to go through what they have to go through to fight the British government to get their sacred artifacts back just because the British government was bigger and more powerful and had more advanced weaponry than their ancestors and so just stole it um, and it's really interesting hearing the stories of the people that are fighting to get it back and using the law obviously that to get it um anyway i just i found that really fascinating so it's it's an interesting thing to think about that idea that we are we you know we do need to work together that despite the fact that colonialism is in many ways dead um, in terms of actual government policy it is still very much alive in the lived experience of people who've been colonized it's still very much alive in the way that artifacts are still still stolen and still need to make their way back to traditional owners even at the very least to the land they were taken from like the the last episode or the yeah the latest episode about the Guigal shield 
you know, the people, the elders that are involved in that process are saying they don't want it for their personal gain. They just want it to be in a museum in Australia. So Australian Aboriginal kids and, and other cultures can look at it and go, yeah, that's, that's part of our history. They just don't want it over in Britain because it's not, it's not as important to them. And, the, you know, the fuss that Britain's um, put up to, <laughs> to stop them getting it, you know. Um, but it really made me wonder about are we doing the right thing in terms of making, like, yeah, there's not enough. There's not enough people advocating to get these artefacts home. Um, they were stolen. They were looted. Um, people were murdered to get them. And literally, some of them are people's severed heads. It's messed up. They've got big tattoos on them. They're really cool, apparently. Anyway, I had to look them up. Anyway, but I can't recommend this podcast highly enough. Stuff the British Stole by Mark Fennell. It's on the ABC Listen app. I'm not sure how long it's going to be there for, but get in and listen to it while you can. I'll put the link below. Uh, just another shout out to Bagurk Bagurk who did my earrings for today. Little books, so pretty. Local camper business, do wooden jewellery. Can't recommend them highly enough. I'll check their uh, link in the thing below too. Thanks very much for listening. See you next week. Bye.